This is Science Quest. With your host, Jed Allen Friel. Taking you around the world, discussing everything science. It's science. So join us as we set sail aboard the research vessel, the RV Lake Guardian, for a week of scientific research. And I hope you find some answers to your scientific questions. I'm Jed Allen Friels, and thanks for joining us this week on Science Quest. We're still on the Guardian and all of a sudden something's happened downstairs in the biology lab and I've come up to get one of our other shipboard scientists, Kim. Kim, you know they were having that problem downstairs in the lab? Well, Zach just told me they've got it worked out and he wants to come down and find out what's oh, going on. Great. So we're, Kim's going to go down and check in with Zach and Emily and let's see what's going on in the lab. Doing. Well, we're good, but we heard you got the problem fixed. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me try. This is Emily and this is Zach. They're two of our shipboard scientists. Kim and I heard we were having the problem, and all of a sudden we've got it worked out. Yeah. Zach and Emily, solved. tell us what was going on. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're here. Uh, we're studying phosphorus, which is just an important nutrient for for the plants and the algae growing in the water. And uh, basically, we want to see how it's changing. Basically, we're here seeing how the muscles affect it. Uh, we're we're, we're measuring uh, muscle, poop, and pee here, really. It's really what we're doing. Why would we be measuring muscle, poop, and pee, Zach? <laughs> well, this pee and poop is just loaded with this phosphorus, and the little algae at the base of the food web uh, love to eat it up. So once you get lots of phosphorus, you get lots of algae, you get little bugs growing, you get fish, and you get big old salmon. So it's really the base of the food web, and it's really important for us to understand how these muscles are changing the dynamics of it. Uh, so that's what, what's happening. Now one of the problems though is there's not very much phosphorus in Lake Michigan. Um, however, it's it's pretty much everywhere, all over your hands, it's on this table, it's on this helmet right here, it's everywhere. So being that, that, uh, being that, that this is the problem, uh, it's very, very easy to contaminate a sample. You know? So if you touch it wrong, if you touch a lid, if you sneeze in there, spit in there, anything like that, you can get contamination. So on Monday, uh, we were so excited. We got our experiment set up and everything like that. So we got our fancy instrument up and running. Finally got some samples, ran them, and they were about 10 to 15 times higher than we thought, uh, which was not good. We, we definitely don't think those are real numbers. So basically what we had to do is just go through and clean everything. Um, so you knew right away you thought you had contamination that was not accurate data? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the numbers were, like, like I said, 10 to 15 times higher than what you thought. Not to mention, we do replication, so we have uh, a repeating of, of every sample we take. Uh, so we have an A, B, and C, and they weren't similar at all. There, there's huge variation between this, which also suggests that there could be a problem. You, we treat them exactly the same way, so you'd think you'd get the same number, but we didn't. So Kim and I can both attest to the fact that you and Emily were not in a good mood at that point. <laughs> yeah. Pretty it's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. It we was just couldn't hard. figure out what the problem was. We had set everything up correctly, we had gotten the equipment together, and it just kept coming out inaccurate. Our hypothesis was pr was proving wrong. We just we didn't think it was actually that something was wrong with the experiment. We thought it was a contamination issue. Yeah, so we had a plan and then uh, we had a problem. So basically what we did is we started from the beginning and we just started by ruling things out. So we have these big core tubes where all our samples are. We cleaned those, we ran the experiment, our phosphorus went down to a more reasonable level. But it was still higher than we thought. So we went to the next step of the process. Now we have clean tubes. So we have little filters. So this is a part of a filtration manifold. So we tried this, we cleaned this, so our number still went down. Um, again, just went every through every single step, step of the process and, and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and finally got numbers that made sense. Now, yeah, this was at two in the morning. Uh, when, when I found, found this out, I think it's the happiest I've been since Christmas of 1998. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually, I was here. I witnessed Zach's excitement. 
He fell on the ground with excitement. I literally <laughs> fell on the ground. He was laying on the ground in pleasure. Yeah. You told me science can be fun even at 2.30 in the morning in the middle of a ship on Lake Michigan. Yeah, After can. you've been trying to find out what your contamination problem is for 12 hours, and you finally solve the problem, it's a very exciting moment. It feels like a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. yeah, even though it wasn't necessarily getting results yet, it was a, a step in the process and now two days later we've been running samples, we've been getting awesome results, our experiments are going great and we're actually figuring stuff out about the lake. What are you finding out right now? I know it's all preliminary, yeah, yeah, it's what all, are you finding out? It's all pretty preliminary, it's really hard to say, um, but it definitely seems just from some of our muscle experiments, obviously their, their, their pee and poop bar increasing phosphorus concentration in uh, our chambers. So kind of what we expected, but again, very pre preliminary, no quotes on this. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Kim, you got any questions for Zach and Emily while we got them cornered? So, so how many times have you repeated this, the same? Yeah, so, so we've done different variations of the same experiment. So we've done um, stuff with just muscles. We'll go down, get this big thing. We have all our, some of our educators doing the hard work of scrubbing the muscles, making sure there's nothing on them, they're nice and clean. Throw them in a little chamber, let them poop and pee for a few hours. Actually, that's what we're doing right now. We're just letting them wait, and then we run the samples. Uh, we also sent down a big machine that goes down to the bottom, into the mud, and sucks up the mud. We cover it. It's got muscles on the top. We do the same thing. Uh, now we, we just are curious to see what happens to the muscles and the mud. Uh, both of those things are important because phosphorus dynamics. Uh, so, so, so right now this is our fourth or fifth experiment and we still got one more tonight and then we'll call it a wrap. Well I'm glad you guys are in such a great mood now because I work in the lab across the hall and I know you weren't. I think the real lesson for us here is that sometimes science does not go as planned. It doesn't mean you give up because that's not the thing to do. Some of the greatest inventions of all times were mistakes. Think about the microwave oven when they were walking by that day with a chocolate bar in their pocket and it melted and all of a sudden one of the scientists said hey I wonder if and that's what happens sometimes in science. You find data and information and results that maybe weren't what you want. So you go back and you rethink and you keep on the path and you never know what's going to happen. From the Lake Guardian, thanks for joining us today on Science Quest.